Hello, welcome to this episode of The Savvy Music Teacher. My name is Keith Hodson. Uh, I'm Director of Music Education at the University of the Arts in Philadelphia and a former band director from New Jersey. And I also am Director of Music Education for Zesowitz Music. Uh, today I'm here with Lisa Raspaldi from Freehold Township, New Jersey. And we're here to talk about recruitment and retention uh, as we entered the fall 2020 school year. Uh, Lisa, why don't you introduce yourself? Oh, well, thank you so much, Keith. I have been teaching in Freehold Township for almost 22 years uh, in different aspects of music. For most of my career, I've been teaching instrumental music, and we are a K-8 district, so I had the, uh, the good fortune of having students from 4th, 5th, 6th, 7th, and 8th grade at some point and was able to feed my own middle school program. Uh, currently, I am teaching instrumental 5th grade beginner band, and I also uh, taught vocal music for 10 years. I'm a graduate of Wilkes University in Wilkes-Barre, PA, and also the Mason Gross um, School of the Arts at Rutgers for a master's degree in, in music education. So I'm very delighted to be here and very excited to uh, share some ideas and uh, hopefully help out someone else in the future. Thanks so much, Keith. So are you. Yeah. So let's, uh, let's talk about, let's go back to the spring. Um, I'm interested in what discussions, well, first of all, what thoughts you had as you approached the end of the year, probably at a time where you would normally be doing your recruiting um, and what discussions took place maybe with your administrators or other music teachers in the district and uh, decisions that you made about recruiting. Well, as um, pretty much the entire world was reeling from uh, shutdowns and schools being physically closed, you know, we all had to reinvent the wheel. We all had to figure out how to, how to communicate with our students. So um, discussions that were had among colleagues in the district were, let's keep them playing. Let's just have the students keep their interest in the instrument. Um, it was right about two weeks prior to our very first concert. I was in three schools last year. And the first school's concert was uh, scheduled for the end of March. So the students were in the middle of rehearsals and they were loving it. Um, instead of just the lessons that we had, we pulled the groups together. So they kind of had a taste of it. The other schools had not started their large groups. So, you know, for them, it was, it's still an unknown uh, to have their performances. Uh, we normally would have um, students in the year that would be following. So my fifth grade performances would have the fourth graders uh, attending them. And that would normally be our recruitment for that concert. And then of course we have the middle schools that would come to us or we would go to them so that the fifth graders would know where they were going next. So all of that had a change. Um, so what we did as a department is we had a meeting with our middle school teachers to show the fifth graders what to do in the future. But our fourth graders unfortunately did not have any recruitment activities. Uh, we were just trying to get by. So uh, as far as that, at the, in the springtime, really not much was going on with the beginning band program for the next year, unfortunately. And that, that's when you normally did do the, meet the instruments and-, and we, would, we would actually have the band performance, which was the beginning of it. And uh, schedules um, every year, we would have scheduled in the September, uh, first couple of weeks, we would have the meet the instruments and the instrument demo assembly. So those activities normally would take place in the fall, uh, but in the springtime, it's really great to have that preview for the fourth grade students to see what what the students in fifth grade were doing with instruments. We, okay, we did great. not get a chance to do that, unfortunately. So uh, tell me about the summer. Uh, what, what kind of thoughts and plans looking at the fall and school reopening? Uh, what kinds of things did you do in the summer? Uh, I was fortunate enough to be included in the school reopening team. And uh, it was a very, very large committee of stakeholders from parents to school board members, staff members. Uh, we had paraprofessionals uh, from all walks of life, from the lunch crew to the custodial offices. Um, so I was representing the elementary related arts in this in the uh, committee and the reopening committee was meeting in subgroups. So I got to work on expectations, um, you know, just kind of helping the administrators work out kinks with uh, what, what are the implications of having students come into the school? What are the implications of students being home? and all the, the different scenarios that might come with that, what could, what could be solutions, what could be problems, and you know, vice versa. So um, I was very, very fortunate to be involved in those kinds of activities. 
Um, meanwhile, I also did a lot of personal, I want to call it personal professional development. Um, I had connected with a colleague from college, actually from Wilkes, um, Tim Rausenberger, who works with the Getting It Done uh, webinar series, and he invited me to just see this, the, the webinars for myself, and I ended up being a contributor at, at one point. So I had a cadre of music teachers from his particular school district as sort of my social networking friends for the summer, and we just talked music a lot. We did social events, we did Kahoot meetings, um, where you know we, we just had social time and we also had music time. So it was really very helpful to connect with other music colleagues, even people that I had just met and keep in touch with them over the summer. It just kept my, my mental and emotional self stable and positive. And I was really ready to start the school year on a, on a good note. I didn't look at it as, as, a, as, as a horrible detriment, you know, to have all these restrictions. I looked at it as a challenge and something that I knew that I could do. So it's really helpful to have that, the network with you, a, a group of people to help. Oh, that's fantastic. Yeah. How about uh, in terms of now recruitment plans and and uh... so uh, what we had uh, done is the the music teachers in the springtime were keeping in touch. We actually had a Google document with questions and um, you know just basic sh information sharing going on, and that started in the springtime among all the uh, music teachers, not just the instrumental department. And we talked about pros and cons, things that worked. We shared software. Uh, that was really helpful, but we, we really only had one meeting um, and we talked about the possibilities of the of the fall. So there were some folks that were saying, well, we don't know anything yet. Let's not do all this legwork yet. Um, in the meantime, uh, many of us uh, attended professional development. I know that there was an arts and education. Um, uh, actually, it was a workshop for several days. I attended that just to get some ideas on how others might be handling this and also to get the CDC recommendations, all of the um, research that had been coming out at the various universities and basically taking all that information. And then we had a meeting in August with our Zeswitz rep. Um, Andy Moeller actually called the meeting for us and we sat down as an instrumental department and we mapped out the possibilities of having virtual online learning, which is what we were told by the district we would all be doing. So we set up a recruitment schedule. We're going to have um, a, an instrument registration period. We were going to have a, a rental drop-off period. And once we set those dates, it gave us a, a skeleton to work with so that we can make plans and kind of a, sort of preempt the admins because at that point, the administration did not have instrumental music on their radar. And we basically took the reins as a department with, with Andy's help and basically gave them solutions. We emailed them and said, this, these are the dates we're proposing, do you approve? And all of my administrators are very appreciative that that had been taken care of and taken off their plate. Yeah, administrators like when you bring them solutions instead of uh, problems, right? Mm -hmm. um, or at least the solutions to the problems. Um, how, how about the, uh, the meet, how did the students and parents do the meet the instruments? Uh, what kinds of things did you do to, to actually do the recruitment? Well, normally uh, we do have an event that is hosted by Zeswitz Music in our district and the students could come to the location, try out the different instruments, of course, disinfecting mouthpieces and so forth. This year, the district said, absolutely not, we, we cannot do that. Uh, but Zeswitz did have the option of having personal, or I should say, um, several um, mouthpieces and so forth, so that every student would have a fresh one, it still was not going to happen. The, the, the district was being very, very conservative about it, and we appreciate that. You know, we, we don't want anyone to get sick. So instead, we decided to have, um, oh, I, I'm sorry, I, I want to add one more thing. Besides the Meet the Instruments event, which is district-wide, every school would have a demonstration assembly where the, the rep would come in and play um, and demonstrate the instruments, and then we would send out the forms, and the whole recruitment would begin. This year, we had to put the kibosh on the meet the instruments. No one was able to be fitted for an instrument. And instead we had a virtual assembly um, where I actually, and I, I would believe my colleagues may have done something similar, but I utilized the demonstration videos that Andy put together. Um, and I also made a slideshow presentation. So I was able to kind of talk about the program on some of these slides. And then we have a couple of instruments being demonstrated. And then I talked about scheduling. And so I broke it up into about a 40 minute 
uh, demonstration and I invited the entire grade level in all of my schools. So I did several different demos um, and I had the homeroom teachers as co-hosts on the Zoom so that they would be in charge of letting students in and out and making sure they legitimately were the correct students. Um, and I basically did my demo virtually. It was very successful. And one of the things that actually we got the idea from Zeswitz uh, when we put together our teacher and I should say our district recruitment website through Zeswitz, one of the things that we were asked if we wanted was student testimonials which was a great idea. So I kind of stole that idea and put that in my slideshow. And mm -hmm. I had some students with videos and some, you know, they sent me text messages or emails. And that really was wonderful because the, even the teachers were happy to see that some of their students from last year were happy about the program and wanted to talk about it. I think that goes a long way to have the, the other student, previous students talk about the program. So that's definitely a big piece of the recruitment that I think a lot of us never got to do before until well, learning. Yeah, well, it sounds like it was such, it was such a successful virtual uh, Meet the Instrument is nice. I think Andy did a wonderful job with those, uh, all those Meet the Instrument videos, uh, getting a lot of use. Uh, and also the involvement of your homeroom teachers um, at, on your Zoom call to, to let the kids in and everything. That, that's, uh, I hadn't heard, heard that all being used before. Um, can you, you mentioned the website. Can you expand a little bit more on the, uh, how you utilize the website for, Parents sure, that's sure. what gave us the opportunity to uh, put our recruitment materials on a general website through that main, or I should say a web page through that main website for uh, recruitment. So we put our recruitment letter, we put links to our registrations. Uh, because there were several beginning band teachers last year, we ended up with three different registrations uh, for three different teachers. Um, so we basically had a kind of a one-stop shopping for them. And we also included some of the other recruitment materials, such as choosing an instrument. Um, I, I have to say that I was very, very pleased with that video the most. Choosing an instrument did not come off as red from Zeswitz. It was, I'm going to be honest with you, as, as our, the rep really is. Uh, he has that sincerity about him, and it's just who he is. But he basically sat down and just heart to heart with the with the video camera and said to, to parents, please be very careful about the instruments that you're you're going to be renting or buying for your child. And it was so well thought out and it was everything that I could possibly have wanted to say to them. So I included that on my website as well as we um, asked to put that on the recruitment website through Zeswitz. So I, I think that's another big piece for recruitment to be successful, for students to be successful is to know the quality of the instrument and what sort of uh, program that you're going to be entering into for contract on your rentals. You know, is, is there going to be a repair contract? Are repairs included? Are there, um, are there going to be loaner instruments available to the child without, you know, extra cost? I, I think all of those things contribute to the a successful program. So we felt that that was a very important component of the recruitment site and uh, basically just giving parents a, a, a one-stop shop uh, information hub, which I thought was very helpful for the district. Yeah, great. Well, thanks for touching on that stuff. Um, so how about some successes? Can you share some successes in the last two months of teaching virtually, um, getting beginners started? What can you share with us? Sure. Well, one of the things that uh, was put upon me at the last minute was the fourth school. I, I was teaching in three schools and because of the virtual learning environment, we had a general music teacher who was doing both and it just wasn't working out with her schedule to have the instrumental students as well. So I was asked by the, uh, we, have, we actually do have a supervisor for all the related arts department and she basically said, could we add these children from another school to your schedule since you're virtual. And I thought about it and said, well, uh, it's absolutely possible because I don't have to worry about teaching just the students from that school on that day or in that lesson. I was able to actually combine. Um, so if I have one lone trombonist in one school, I can pull that trombonist with another group from another school and no, it, no one misses a beat. No pun intended. Um, so basically, it, it afforded me a lot more scheduling opportunities. And I have to say, I learned this in the springtime when I was working on Zoom calls with my students in three schools, I started to level them. And this is a really great, important aspect of virtual learning because as long as their schedules could work, they're virtual, it doesn't matter what location they're in, I was able to put my most advanced players together across the district. So I had a beautiful little baritone class 
with um, students who were far into the book. And then I had students who might have needed more remedial help. I had leveled them together. And it, it didn't matter if they were in different schools, they were, they were together in a Zoom call. So that is one of the biggest, most wonderful things about the virtual environment. You can actually have your dream classes rather than have students who, from all different levels in the same class. And you know, it does take some work and scheduling, uh, but it, it worked beautifully. And uh, the students really retained a lot. So you're able to differentiate the instruction more, more so than you would have been in person. Right now, of course, now we're just starting out. I've actually only been teaching for the last month because we spent September recruiting and, and getting used to a lot of professional development. So um, I don't really have 100% the enough information to do that. But I know that in the future, I can move students around as mm -hmm. they present themselves, you know, whatever level that they're playing at. So right now, they're kind of in the beginning and starting to emerge, I'm starting to see the students who are taking off and the students who are still struggling at the beginning. Um, but it's definitely, a, a, I should say, a pro about the virtual environment. Great. Well, that's super. Um, how about challenges? Any challenges you're facing that uh... <laughs> I think we all know those challenges, but uh, I definitely can highlight them. Um, in the very beginning, obviously, you know, a lot of it is very hands-on, especially when you're dealing with um, woodwinds, reeds, uh, a, lot of, a lot of setup, a lot of pieces, and it's taking a lot longer for me to get the students to where I want them to be. We had a lot of broken reeds in the beginning, you know, that was to be expected. Um, that's usually like one of my, my, my litmus tests to see if I'm doing a good job in person how many reads were broken in the first two weeks, you know, uh, but it's just, it's going to happen. And it did happen. Um, a lot of students just kind of figuring stuff out on their own. Um, it's funny, the very, very first lesson I had with the students, um, I, I looked at the screen and I saw a whole lot of them with the entire instrument together, which in, in, a, in a way it, it shocked me. But at the same time, I thought, yeah, why not? If I was a student and I had my instrument prior to my first lesson, I probably would have tried to do that too. And I noticed that a lot of students were out researching or looking at the book. Um, but, you know, did they put it together correctly? Mm, was the bridge key bent on the clarinet? You know, they had the reeds on in weird ways. So, you know, I, I had to really just do everything in much slower motion, a lot of repetition, a lot of review. Um, for three lessons, we worked on just checking setup, and, and we would do that in person anyway. We would check to see if the reads are correct. Um, a lot of embouchure work. I um, actually found a resource, which was, I believe, was the embouchure project on Teachers Pay Teachers. It was a little pricey, but I said, you know what, for my peace of mind, I'm willing to make a contribution to the school. And it has great slideshow pictures of embouchures. So, you know, lots of resources you can give to students, but as a, as a con, it's just so, so hard to see the detail and not every student is gonna hold it up correctly and show it to, you know, so there's so many things that can be missed. Um, so I have a way to work around that, but it takes a lot longer, you know, to get them to where I wanted them to be. So it's just, it just takes time and you don't have, like I said, you can't see things up close. Uh, you can't do anything hands-on with them. You can't turn things for them and, you know, fix, cheeks for them, not that you would be touching their cheeks, but you know, there, there's a lot that you really miss in that in person. Um, I actually had a student who missed the second lesson, clarinet, and uh, we were putting out these barrel together and the poor kid, he just wouldn't look up at the screen. All he wanted to do was try it himself and he missed the second lesson. So by the third lesson, everyone was making beautiful sounds, we're ready to put an instrument together and he was just struggling. So that disconnect is hard for some students. They just don't want to sometimes just look at that screen. They're, they're tired of it. So that's another issue that we've been having, you know, and I think everyone who's been teaching has been having that issue. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's the disconnect, the lack of detail, um, not, abil not the ability to be in person and really, you know, be that live person. Every, it, the the um, videos sometimes are unstable, you know, but they're used to that now, I think. So it's just for, it, I think the teachers are having a harder time with them than the students, honestly. Well, you know, I, I can tell that your students are very lucky to have you and uh, your positivity and your passion for what you're doing is, is excellent. Uh, before we close, could, why don't you tell me a little bit about your, uh, your, your music team and how they function um, your, with your colleagues and other schools, horizontally and vertically? What, what can you share about? Sure. Well, um, horizontally in my own school, we do have a related arts team that's very close. Um, related arts meaning Spanish art 
and we we put phys ed in there because we don't have an actual dance theater department so they're all kind of put in there what would, people would normally call the special areas and of course the music and we have media so we do have a weekly team meeting where we can get together and discuss uh scheduling and um you know the issues that we might have with this platform tips to help each other work on google classroom and so forth but as far as just being able to talk shop it's just me and the vocal music teacher really that can bounce ideas off of each other and we're not even teaching the same exact area so what um, the district does set up for us uh, during parent conferences uh, they will cancel one evening of conferences for us and they will give us the afternoon early dismissal time um, for a department meeting where we would get to get together with the other teachers in our area um, and of course the arts teachers get together and so forth. Um, I do know that there are other um, related arts teachers that do perp they, they actually purposely schedule meetings with one another. We don't as music teachers because we're all in different schedules. Um, the instrumental department's very different because we have middle school teachers. We have a middle school teacher who teaches elementary band. We have me who just teaches elementary band. Um, in the past, we've had vocal teachers take a few of the elementary band classes. So we're all kind of in different places. Uh, but we do keep in touch via email, telephone, uh, whenever we get a moment and we have a chance to speak. We talk a lot about if, if someone has a question and one of the teachers is an expert in that particular instrument or they have experience with a certain thing, uh, we will discuss, you know, always back and forth. It doesn't matter how long we've been teaching. We still knock ideas off of each other and ask questions. Uh, when it came to recommendations, students might have questions about mouthpieces. I mean, we're always in contact when we can be. Uh, so even though we don't have the weekly team meeting that the third grade teachers might have or the fifth grade teachers might have, we, we all try to keep in contact as much as possible. Also via email, texting, you know, we're a very tight group and uh, we try to work together as much as possible for the, for the benefit of all students. It really is important, you know, to, to have that network. I know that you're a K-8 district and you have a regional district with a lot of schools and I know a lot of your students can, can go to all different schools for different things, but uh, what's the relationship like with uh, the regional high school district? Great question. Uh, I, I can tell from my own experience and I know it's still happening. Um, when I taught middle school, we have the township high school. Uh, which our students would go to if they were not going to another learning center. And the high school band director would invite the middle school students in the fall to come to a football game and sit in the stands, play a couple tunes with the students. In the springtime, they would be invited to come to a concert band invitational where they would put on a small concert. Um, and we used to do the same thing in middle school for the elementary students, but they actually have different kinds of recruitment um, where they can do something similar in one school and another school they'll come and play with the kids. Uh, but moving on to the high school level, we definitely have a very strong relationship with our in town high school band director. And we're very fortunate that uh, one of our middle school band directors is the assistant band director at the high school. So we even have that connection going on. Um, really, it's just it's just a great group. We used to have a, a summer program and the high school band director would come in and help out and just kind of watch and volunteer because all of his high school students were there. So it, there was a real camaraderie, real family, and it continues as we go through. So it's one of the things that we did notice um, and in the past, I used to even invite some of those students, like in the summer band um, program model, where the older students would come and sit with the younger students and volunteer. I would invite the seventh and eighth graders to come to the sixth grade band rehearsal. Um, I'm not sure if that's continuing on. I think sometimes that does happen if you have a spot, you need a tenor saxophonist and there's no one in sixth grade that plays. But the idea of family and working together throughout the, the levels starts pretty much in the lower levels as well. So we, we work very, very well together um, with the high school band director. And there's actually another um, in the Manalpin area too, we've worked with him as well because he's always at the Invitational. So uh, we're, we're very fortunate that despite the fact that we're in different buildings and we don't really see each other, we do communicate. That's fantastic. It makes all the difference in the world for the students. Well, Lisa, thanks for sitting down and, and discussing things with me today. And uh, thank you for all you do for your students. Oh, thank you so much for having me, and, and I'm happy to help at any time. Great. So thank you very much, and th those listening and watching, thanks for joining us. Take care.